gym class, fun physical education frolic, or cruel torture banned from school curriculums due to budget cuts, dodgeball misunderstandings, and personal injury lawsuits? I'll take that as a vote for both. Schools across the country are eliminating gym classes from their curriculums for an increasingly wide variety of reasons. The National Association for Sport and Physical Education reports that barely half of elementary students nationwide have physical education, and only one-third of high school students have daily gym class. Will the current generation be the last to know the thrill of running laps, doing jumping jacks, and climbing ropes while wearing identical t-shirts and shorts? The practice of holding classes for physical fitness began in ancient Greece as a way to train soldiers and keep them in shape in between invasions, wars, and pillaging. Greek men and boys attended these physical education classes in a building called a gymnasium, which comes from the Greek word gymnos, which means naked. Yep, they exercised in the nude. At the gymnasiums, the Greeks practiced running, jumping, wrestling, and boxing, and learned how to throw the discus and the javelin. Many of these exercises became competitive events in the first Olympiad, held in 776 BC. Of course, women and girls were banned from both the gym classes and the Olympics. If they wanted to see naked Greek men running and wrestling, they just had to attend a toga party. Schools stopped offering physical education classes during the Middle Ages, primarily because schools stopped offering classes altogether as education fell out of favor. Even where schools were still open, gym classes weren't offered because people at the time considered physical exercises and sports to be sinful. Sounds like they were just doing them wrong. Physical education was revived during the Renaissance and by the 1800s was a regular school activity in Germany, Sweden, and England, for males only. However, in 1823, British schools began offering calisthenics classes for girls. Phys ed classes eventually spread to the United States, mostly in colleges and high schools. In the 1950s, the Department of Health and Human Services issued a report about the poor physical shape of elementary school children, prompting President Dwight Eisenhower to hold the first President's Conference on the Fitness of American Youth, which recommended that all schools provide physical education classes. In 1986, President Ronald Reagan created the President's Physical Fitness Test to measure students' physical abilities. All of that exercise put American kids in great shape. So what happened? Budget cuts force schools to cut gym classes, lay off gym teachers, and close school gyms. Federal mandates on nationwide testing force schools to place more emphasis on math and reading. And the same safety issues that remove seesaws, slides, and monkey bars from playgrounds also scared school administrators into removing gym classes. The end result is an increase in child obesity. In other words, we've gone from no child left behind to a lot of children with fat behinds. Fortunately, gym classes in schools are making a comeback. The Center for Disease Control and First Lady Michelle Obama are creating fitness programs at the federal level and local school districts are finding budgets and resources to get students exercising in school again. That's good news for kids who like to run and jump and get in shape. Bad news for that great American gym class game, dodgeball. Dodgeball dates back to over 200 years ago when British missionary Dr. James H. Carlyle observed men in Africa staying in shape for tribal battles by throwing rocks at each other while trying to dodge rocks thrown at them. Dodge rock doesn't have the same ring to it. Dr. Carlyle saw the physical benefits of this game and brought it back to St. Mary's College in Norfolk, England, where he replaced the rocks with a leather ball. Philip Ferguson added some rules and brought the sport to the U.S., where it became a popular gym class and schoolyard activity, until recently when many school districts decided to ban dodgeball for a variety of reasons. According to some, it's unfair, exclusionary, warlike, and dangerous. Sounds like they are just doing it wrong. With or without dodgeball, crab soccer, or red rover, physical education classes and physical fitness are on their way back. I'm so excited I'm going out for a run.